Good morning, grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome, welcome back to worship. I'm Emily, I'm the pastor here at Riverside Park United Methodist Church. And I wanna say a warm welcome to those of you who are back home worshiping with us and also for those of you that are watching this video later. You are just as much a part of this service. Um, I wanna encourage you again, remember that this is not just a show that we are producing, this indeed is worship. Um, and so we encourage you, sing along with the hymns, read along with the scriptures, respond with the responses, and during the time of offering, go ahead and list those prayer requests so we can pray together. Uh, I want to say a special welcome and a happy Mother's Day to all of the women who are joining us and all of those who care for others. Um, we also have a couple of announcements I want to list. There is a post on the Facebook page that has all of them. Um, but don't forget, we have songs at 7 this Wednesday. This week will be our praise team playing music. Um, we also have a brand new exciting thing happening this week. On Tuesday at 6.30, we're going to have what we're calling River Kids Zoom. And so that's a special Zoom call for our kids fifth grade or younger. It is not school. It is not class. Um, in fact, I think this, this Tuesday they're going to do a pretty epic uh, scavenger hunt. And uh, So you can email kids at riversideparkumc.com to get the Zoom link for that. So sign on and play some games with Miss Dakota. Um, and then last but not least, we're going to continue this online worship. Our, uh, our bishop and our conference has put out a recommendation that our in-person worship be suspended at least through June 15th. Um, we're not really sure when we'll be back in person, but we're going to continue to offer some sort of online worship option, at least until a vaccine is available. Uh, so, so just know that that is happening. We are having those conversations. Um, so please pray for God's wisdom for our church and our team. Uh, but at this time, we're going to continue our service of worship. We have a wonderful liturgy, uh, a litany for Mother's Day, because I, I want to, we need to remember uh, that Mother's Day is a joyful time of celebration for many, and also Mother's Day can be difficult, even on a normal year. And this year especially, we have to acknowledge that this Mother's Day is not a normal and typical year. Even for folks that have really great relationships uh, with your kids and your parents and your children, um, we're not able to celebrate like we normally would, and so we need to acknowledge that. Uh, we also need to just name that this social distancing at home has tested the patience of even our most saintly of parents. Uh, and for folks that are caring for older moms that may be aging or in nursing homes, it's been especially difficult. Uh, and for moms who have distant relationships with your kids, the separation and social distance can kind of heighten that feeling. And so this Mother's Day litany covers the whole spectrum of Mother's Day because we are the church and we need to be honest with one another, sharing our joys and our concerns. And so let us celebrate, let us worship together with this Mother's Day litany. And so we are the church. Today on Mother's Day, we mourn with those who mourn and we celebrate with those who celebrate. To all who are distant from loved ones today, we grieve the season together. To those who gave birth this year to their first child, we celebrate with you. To those who have lost a child, we mourn with you and honor those memories. To those who are in the trenches with little ones every day and wear the badge of food stain, we appreciate you. To those who experience loss through miscarriage, failed adoptions, or running away. We mourn with you. To those who walk the hard path of infertility, fraught with pokes, prods, tears, and disappointment. Forgive us when we say foolish things. We don't mean to make it harder than it is. To those who are foster moms, mentor moms, and spiritual moms. We need you! To those who have warm and close relationships with your children. We celebrate with you. To those who have disappointment, heartache, and distance with your children. We sit with you. To those who lost their mothers this year. We with you. To those who experience abuse at the hands of your own mother. We acknowledge your experience and pray for your healing. 
to those who lived through driving tests, medical tests, and the overall testing of motherhood. To those who are single and long to be married and mothering your own children. We mourn that life has not turned out the way you longed for it to be. To those who step parent. We walk with you on these complex paths. To those who envisioned lavishing love on grandchildren, yet that dream is not to be. We grieve with you. To those who have emptier nests in the upcoming year. We grieve and rejoice with you. And to those who are pregnant with new life, both expected and surprising. We anticipate with you. To all women who offer love and care for others this day. We see you and we are grateful for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This Mother's Day, wherever you are, we walk with you. Caring for others is not for the faint of heart. And we have real warriors in our midst. May the Lord hold you and keep you in grace. May the Lord bless you with strength and courage. Please join me in our call to worship. We've come to worship God who loved us before we were born, who knows us even better than we know ourselves, whose presence never leaves us, and whose love for us never ceases. This, this is, is our God, God who forgives. Let, Let us, us worship, worship together. together. scripture lesson this morning comes from Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is righteousness, there is forgiveness with you, so that you may be revered. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word I hope, my soul waits for the Lord, more than those who watch for the morning, more than those who watch for the morning. 
O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is great power to redeem. It is he who will redeem Israel from all its iniquities. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Psalm 130 in multiple places says, I wait for the Lord. In fact, one line is, I wait for the Lord like those who wait for the morning. And if there is one thing we are doing a lot of in the midst of this lockdown, it is waiting. Um, and I know there are some of you that may be waiting with, with perfect patience, and you are simply waiting on the Lord with joy. Uh, but I gotta be honest, I know I am waiting with a certain sense of, of uh, impatience. Uh, and so what I need is time and space to be at peace with this sense of waiting. So our breath prayer this morning, our time of peace, as you inhale, I'm going to invite you to say, Lord, we wait for you. And as you breathe out, you will say, my soul waits. And as we pray this prayer, as we talk about waiting, I want you to pay attention to the state of your soul. Are you waiting on the Lord with patience? Or are you waiting in anxiousness? Are you waiting maybe with some anger? Are you waiting with frustration? I mean, I think we can pray that different ways. We can say, God, I am waiting. And also we can say, God, I am waiting. And so I think as we pray through this, um, the state of our soul can change and be more at peace. So I invite you again, pray this honestly. As you breathe, let us pray. Lord, we wait for you. My soul waits. Breathe in, breathe in. Lord, I wait for you. My soul waits. Lord, we wait for you. My soul waits. Lord, I wait for you. We wait for your patience and your peace. My soul waits. Lord, I wait for you. We wait for this to be over and friendships and encounters to be back to normal. My soul waits. Lord, we wait for you. We wait for this pandemic to be over. My soul waits. Lord, we wait for you. My soul waits. Lord, in our waiting, we wait in you. Give us your peace. Give us your patience. Hear our supplication in the name of Jesus Christ. <sighs> Amen. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite our kids to come forward for our kids' message. If you are fifth grade or younger, come on and get a little bit closer to the screen. Kids, bring your questions, questions for Christ. Mother's Day. Our question this morning comes from Reese, and Reese is 10 years old, and Reese asks us, how is it that God can hear all of our prayers all the time and at the same time. So Reese, thank you for your question. Psst, Billy. Kids, bring your questions, questions for Christ. Again, Reese, thank you. Um, and I wanna just pause and say, if there's anybody else that has kid questions, go ahead and send them in. We want you to ask questions about God and faith and church. Um, and, and I gotta tell you, kids, the adults are benefiting from your questions because there are many things kids are better at and asking questions is one of them. Adults are often afraid to ask questions. So you being courageous enough to ask a question is an awesome thing, so thank you. All right, so Reese, when we're talking about God and God answering all of our prayers all at the same time, I think part of it is that God is huge and big and God has the ability to be everywhere all at the same time. But one way that I have thought about it, and I don't know if this will make sense to you, but I happen to know Reese, I know that you really like to read. And I have a, this is a Bible here, 
And here I have the Bible open to Moses praying to God and asking for help. But I also have this Bible open to Jesus praying and asking God for help. And I know scripture does tell us that we are in the palm of God's hand. So God has the ability to hold you and hold me and hold Miss Millie and hold all of the teachers and all people. God can hold us in the palm of his hand at the same time. And at the same time, I'm able to see this prayer and this prayer at the same time. So when we have our lives open to God, kind of like a book is open, we got to remember that God is the one who wrote our story. God is with us through every single page of our own story. God is with us through every single moment. And also, God has the ability to be in our story and somebody else's story at the same time. Now, I know that doesn't perfectly describe exactly how God works, but I got to be honest, the fact that we don't fully understand God is part of what makes God that much more awesome. There's a wonder and a greatness to God. So thank you for your question, Reese. Keep them coming. Kids, bring your questions, questions for Christ. Happy Mother's Day. All right, kids, one thing I want you to do right now uh, because it's Mother's Day, I want you to look at whoever you're with, whoever, whatever parent, whatever guardian, whoever is with you, and I want you to look at them, and on the count of three, I want you to say, thank you. Are you ready? One, two, three. Thank you! And I can say that because I know my, my mom is watching this right now too, so thanks, mom. All right, guys, we're going to pray. If you will repeat after me, ready, pray. Dear God, Thank you for hearing all of our prayers, all the time. You are huge, and you are awesome, and you are listening. Help us to open our lives, open our hearts to you. We thank you for the people that love us. For the moms that care for us and the parents who care for us. We thank you, God, and pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, thank you. Now, at this time, we are going to shift to a time of offering. And so I know, again, typically on a Sunday morning, we would pass the plates and we're not doing that. So I encourage you, take this time to continue leaning into faithfulness and faithful giving. Uh, the address is on the screen and the link to online giving is on the screen. Um, this is a time to offer up our gifts to God so that God can use them for faithful mission and service. We are still going to continue these Wednesday dinners for as long as they are needed and as long as we can. And so some of this faithful giving is supporting those in our community who need it. One of the gifts of worshiping live on Sunday mornings is also that we get to pray for your prayer requests. So also, I invite you to offer up your prayers of thanks and gratitude, um, your prayers for folks that need prayers, and then we're going to pray over those together after the time of offering. Let us give to the Lord our God.
invite you to join with me in lifting these prayers. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, I invite you to say, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious and heavenly God who has created all things, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for this opportunity to gather and worship, to remember that we are not alone. So may your Holy Spirit surround us even as we sit in our homes, even as we sit in different places. May your Spirit gather us up and bring us together. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God, we come and we thank you and praise you for the lives that you have healed. We thank you for, for folks that have been released from the hospitals because of COVID-19 healing. We thank you for the nurses and the doctors and the first responders. We thank you for the folks all along the chain of medical care that care for folks. We especially praise you for answering our prayers for Palm, who is home from the hospital. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for those who are still affected by COVID-19. We know, Lord, that as we shift from thinking about the physical illness to the ways in which it is affecting the economy uh, and the school system and the family systems, Lord, may you keep us vigilant that we would not forget that it is still a pandemic, it is still something to be cautious about. Help us to properly balance loving our neighbor and safety with the necessary needs as they spill forth. Give us your wisdom and your grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we lift to you those who are still sick, those who are struggling with things other than COVID-19, especially those who are facing cancer. Lord, we pray by name, we pray for Sharon and Gordon, and we pray for others who are lifted up as folks sit at home and pray for them by name. Lord, hear these names. We pray for your people. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord, we also pray for Roxanne and the Culbertson family. We pray for those who continue to fight for grace and hope. Lord, we pray for those who are uncertain about the future and finances. We pray for those who continue to carry the grief and the strain and the stress that this is causing. Lord, we pray for hearts to have hope and strength in you. May you remind us that you hold us, Lord Jesus. So for all whose hearts are weary, may you come and bring your light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our leaders, those who lead and make decisions in our communities and in our countries and in our world. Again, gracious God, May you be with those in our school systems, the principals, and those in the school board. Lord, may you continue to send your grace to our students that are taking AP tests this week and our teachers who continue to teach. May you bless them and keep them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Lord, we also thank you and praise you for those who have nurtured us, for those who have cared for us, we pray especially for women, for moms of all types, for those who are joyous this morning and those who are a little weary this morning and all in between. We pray for those who are brokenhearted and for those who feel joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear Lord. our prayer. Lord, we also lift to you those who are caring for their parents this morning. We pray for those who have had to make difficult decisions uh, about how to best care for their parents, to honor their parents, uh, and also keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are struggling with anxiety or depression. We pray for those who are struggling with addictions or other forms of diseases. Lord, in your mercy, hear your our prayer. prayer. And so too, Lord, we pray for our own hearts. We give you our lives, we give you our joys, we give you this honest space of confessing that we need you. So may we remember that you are God. You are mighty, you are giving, you hear our prayers. You call us to live lives that are holy and pleasing to you. And even when we miss the mark, you continue to give your grace 
and call us to lives of service, lives of grace, and lives full of your abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, praying with one voice, gathered in different locations, gathered together by your Holy Spirit, praying one prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. So, Mother's Day is always kind of a, a tension in the church because Mother's Day is not a religious holiday. It's not specifically mentioned in scripture. Um, and also, I don't know if you know this, but the same woman that advocated for Mother's Day to be started in the early 1900s in America, about 10 years later when she realized that it would become like an entire product of the consumer-driven card industry, she turned around and tried to get Mother's Day taken off the list of national holidays because she wanted it to be a time for people together and not a time for buying a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and same too in the church, we have this tension of it's Sunday, it's about God. Uh, and yet, I, I have to say, like, there are many ways in which being a mom has forced me to grow deeper in my spiritual faith. Now, hear me very clearly. You do not have to be a mother to be close to God. You do not have to be a mother in this society. You do not have to have a child of your own uh, in order to grow spiritually. But we are in a world as a church where we share our experiences. And I know for me, I have to say honestly that I love my kid. This is my first official Mother's Day uh, as a mother. Um, and if there is one thing I have learned other than I love my kid and it's a wonderful thing, I also have to say honestly, there's nothing quite like motherhood in my experience to bring me front and center to my many, many, many failings. <laughs> in addition to loving my kid immensely, I also find that I was struck by the sense of terror and my own inadequacy to fully, completely care for her. And I mean that in the epic sense of, like, there's so many things that are out of my control and I was more aware of them, having had a daughter. Uh, but also just little things, like when I was trying to get her dressed in the morning, like it takes physical coordination to take a tiny, tiny, fragile body and stick it in armholes of a onesie. And I'm just awkward, you guys. And so just the simple act of like dressing my baby on a regular basis, like holding her and then passing her off to another person, like I, I, I you know, I know motherhood is this wonderful, angelic, wonderful thing on the surface, but like the reality day to day is very awkward and it's time consuming and it's exhausting and it pulls on your patience. And I am not complaining. Let me hear very clearly. I'm not complaining. I'm not looking for somebody to say, don't worry, you're a good mom. Like, I think you can be a good mom and also feel very awkward and exhausted and realize that it takes work. And with all of that, with that, when we encounter our frustrations, that also is tied tightly with fear and a sense of guilt. I don't know a single mom who has not struggled with guilt. Guilt of not being able to do everything they want to do for their kids. Guilt of not being able to do everything for your children and also do all of the other things in life that life requires because at the end of the day, you can't do it all. And there is nothing like motherhood to put the pressure on you to do more than you're physically able to do. Now again, that is not something that mothers get to own. Everybody struggles with that sense of not being able to do everything we want to do. There's a deep tension even in our call as Christians. On one hand, the book of uh, um, the Ephesians 2.10 speaks about we are God's Creatures, we are created by God in order to do wondrous things that God has prepared in advance for us to do. We are called to do wonderful things for God. 
Just like in our lives, there are many things that we are called to do. And the tension, the, the temptation is to be like superhuman and do everything absolutely perfectly because especially if we're working for God, right? Especially if we're doing something important, we need to do it perfectly well. And we want to bring our best. But the other tension biblically, scripturally, is when we come and we want to do our best, our best is still fragile and our best is still imperfect. Case in point, I've been talking to a lot of parents, not just moms, but parents who have said, yeah, on one hand, it's great to be home with my family. On the other hand, I feel bad that my kid has watched so much more screen time than usual. I just don't have the ability to sit and keep my kid engaged and do everything that needs to be done. There, even with the best of intentions, even with all of the perfect Pinterest boards, I fall short. We fall short. In this, in this pandemic, even if you don't have kids, there's all of the home projects that you could be accomplishing perfectly. There's all of the home mission that you could be accomplishing perfectly. And that's to say, yes, there are things that God calls us to. Even here, God calls us to love our neighbor and care for others. And there is more need than we have the ability. But the tension, of course, is we don't just, uh, we can't not serve. And we can't serve perfectly. And so in the midst of that, we fall into this imperfection and guilt. And it weighs us down because we do make mistakes. Even this week, I, I had a couple of moments where I made a bad call. I leaned on, on being rigid. I leaned on drawing a line where I should have leaned on grace and giving. And in retrospect, I, I was deeply convicted. And so I, in my own spiritual reading, in my own devotions, um, I have been sitting in and out with the book of Leviticus. And I happened to come upon Leviticus 4. I know, again, super nerdy. Who reads the book of Leviticus? Well, occasionally I do. But Leviticus has many, many things and it has many, many provisions. But there are very concrete, specific laws in the book of Leviticus that talk about forgiveness. And there are sacrifices that can be made for when we're dealing with that sense of failure and guilt. There are things, particular ways, I mean, it, it is lined up and it is clear, it is step by step. God is saying, like, if you take this particular gift, bring it before the altar, the, the priest will do A, B, C, and D with the sacrifice, it'll get lifted up. I mean, like, there are lines in the book of Leviticus where it says you take the offering and you put from the priest's thumb to the giver's left earlobe on the left toe. I mean, these are like very specific things on the, the steps we take to get out of that pit of despair and guilt and numbness and failure. These very specific things where God says, here, you are stuck in this pit. Let me show you the steps out. And if I were to stand here right here today and I would say, are you struggling with guilt? All you have to do is these very specific complicated steps. If you do these steps, you will be completely forgiven. You will be completely set free. The slate will be wiped clean and you get a fresh start. I think the gift of these complicated Leviticus offerings is that even back in the Old Testament, God said, look, I know that you are going to fall short. I know that you're going to be imperfect and I want you to have a way out. God is saying, even when you are imperfect as a mom, as a teacher, imperfect as a person, imperfect as a musician, imperfect as a kid, imperfect as a student, even as you are imperfect and way down with a sense of guilt when you make mistakes, God always, always gives us a way back. In some ways, having concrete steps and ways out is, a little, is somewhat more comforting because then we know without a shadow of doubt that we're good. But we know with the story of Jesus, at some point, God said, you know what, that sacrificial system isn't working. Because what would happen is people would go through the steps, and the whole point of the steps is God saying, as you do these particular things, your heart is changing, you are expressing repentance, and you are realizing that these mistakes aren't gonna hold you back again. But what happened, because people are imperfect, is folks started going through the motions of the sacrifice instead of actually getting to the heart of the matter. 
And God said, look, it's not worth it. If, if the sacrificial system isn't going to bring people to the repentant heart that they need, that's not the system. But again, God is good. God is gracious. God wasn't going to say, just Psh, let's just scrap the whole thing. God says, let's continue it, but in a new way. And so our story as Christians is when, even here in the state of guilt and imperfection, mom guilt is a very real phenomenon, even here in this space, God sent Jesus to fulfill that sacrificial system. Jesus died on the cross so that we wouldn't have to go through those very complicated steps. And so when we are deeply in our failures and struggling and when we are imperfect and when we are weighed down by guilt, God still sees us and says, I want you to have a way out. I want you to set your heart free. If the day is going to start again fresh tomorrow, the day can start again right now for you to say, oh man, I have messed up. But there is new grace and my mistakes of the past are not going to hold me back in the future. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, when we come to God, you are forgiven. Through Jesus Christ, we are all given a fresh start so that our guilt, our weight does not hold us back. And also, the gift of repentance is that we are not held to some fake standard of perfection. There is no such thing as a perfect life lived perfectly because the reality of our mistakes and our sins, the reality is that at the end of the day, we are not called to be God. Let me rephrase that. You are not God, my brothers and sisters. You are not perfect. You don't want your kids to worship you. You don't want others to worship you and see your amazing perfection. We don't want the internet and Facebook and Instagram to worship you. And so even your perfections are not the full story. We are still given images of grace, not just in Ephesians, not just in Leviticus, but in Proverbs 3. And you may have heard this verse before. Proverbs 3 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not rely on your own insight. In all your ways, acknowledge God and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. It is physically healing for us not to lean on our own perfections, but to lean on God's. You see, this, this Proverbs isn't just about saying, trust God and God will get you there. It's also about saying, okay, you were trusting God and not ourselves. We're trusting God. We're leaning on God's strength and not our own. The same tension is in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 that says that God's grace is made perfect in our weakness. God's grace is made complete in our imperfections, not our perfections. And so for those days when you are leaning on, God, uh, on guilt, <laughs> parents, moms, on those days when you feel like a failure as a mom, there is grace there. Not because you have failed, but because God is good. If we are focusing on the ways that we are failing, we're still focused on ourselves. If we're focused on the ways that we are perfecting and awesome, we're still focused on ourselves. And at the end of the day, we worship God. It is God who is good and loving and perfect. And I know for me as a parent, I don't want my kid to know that I'm perfect. I want my kid to know that God is good, that God forgives. And I need that lesson for me, not just for her. And so as a mom, what I have learned <laughs> is as this kid has brought to surface my failures and my insecurities, I am having day after day to continue leaning on God's forgiveness, God's grace that is given, not in my best moments, but in my worst. And that is something that all of us can know in here, 
is that when you are at your worst, God's grace is given to make you stronger, to make you forgiven, and also so that at the end of the day, you can look back and say, whew, look what God has done. God has loved even me. God has loved even me. So for all of you this day, with all of your imperfections, with all of the flaws that come this Mother's Day, this Sunday, may you know that God's grace is given even to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. by the hand every step of the way. May God who nurtures and guides, may God bless you and keep you. May God carry you with joy through this day and hope through this week. May you go in the name of Jesus Christ and go in peace. We'll see you next Sunday here live at 10 a.m. Um, but indeed, may God bless you and keep you in the name of Jesus. Blessings to you. Amen.